Hi, this is JP Morgan. Today on the Slam Lens, we're going to answer the comments and questions we got on how to make money in event photography. Great lesson, great comments, great questions, but I wish Paul was here to help me because there's so much great information. We want you to know how to make money and how to find those events, but I need Paul. Well, Whoa! Oh, hey, hey, how'd you take that? You know, we're magic here at the Slide and Lands. I'm glad you made it here because now we can answer those questions. How do you make money? And what do you charge? And how do you get in those venues? Finally, we're doing the video. So let's get started, see what we can do. Cool. So now let's talk about what everyone really wants to know, and that is what do you charge? I had a rep who told me once, the first person to say the price always loses. So it's a really great question to ask, and that is, what is your budget? So, have you found that experience? Does it work? Every event planner has a budget, and it's called marketing, because they want to do another event, and to get that into their budget is to document that is through photography. So let's just get right down to it. What do you charge? I mean, I, there's a lot of numbers out there. I know people have a lot of different opinions about this. Um, I know we have to consider how much is your time worth, and you know, there's a lot of things to think about. But you can say, well, my time's worth uh, ten thousand dollars, you know, for a four-hour period, but you're not going to get that. So, what do we charge? I put a lot of work and effort in the post-production of this, so to make it worth my while, I have this four-hour minimum, so I know that's what I'm going to make to justify for actually just walking out the front door. So, what do you charge for that four-hour minimum, Paul? The <laughs> Experienced <laughs> photographers will charge between five hundred and a thousand dollars for an event. We're not talking a wedding here; we're just talking a regular event. Four it's hours. a store a store opening it can be anywhere from from there and obviously that's a good starting point I don't, I don't walk out the front door for less than five hundred dollars I will not go anywhere if you don't pay me five hundred dollars that's my rule if you only charge one hundred and fifty dollars for an event that's that's it you're done yeah <laughs> you're they'll go well it was one hundred and fifty dollars why am I going to pay you five hundred dollars yeah you're done it's all you're going to go from one fifty to five hundred no if you have a five hundred dollar wedding if you shoot weddings for five hundred dollars guess what those five hundred dollar weddings that's all you're going to get you're not yeah. going to get anything higher than that it's always going to be the same you know where you live the size of the event so many things are going to come into play when you make that decision on what you charge you're going to have to make that decision but don't undersell yourself and each new venue Pump it up a little bit till someone says no. So they say no, you don't know you're at the top of your game. So give it a shot, see what happens. It's a really great idea to have a meeting with your client before you get started. There's a lot of things you're gonna need to learn before you get going. Definitely, the most important thing, your client has a vision of the whole layout and they wanna see it. So it's very important to ask them that. What is the shot that sums up the event? And if they don't know, the other thing is say, well, what's the money shot? Have you seen from somebody else? Who are the else? celebrities? Who are the, what are the great items, what? items we built? What are the cool things here tonight? Correct. Who's, who's the, the, the elite? Who's the one shot that you need to get a picture of? Establish that up front. So do you do shot lists? I was going to say the one <laughs> thing is it's, you're going to get a shot list. It doesn't matter what event is. And shot lists are good and also can be bad. I say it's bad because of the very first shot list I ever got an event, I completely messed it up simply because I assumed that I knew where everything was and I didn't. I assumed that I knew where, who everybody was and I didn't. So I, put, I learned really fast from that first time was put the onus back on them. If you're going to give me a shot list with all these important things, you need to assign me somebody to walk around with me and the shot list and starts marking those off. So they can point over, here's the great flower arrangement we really need to have pictures of because this is done by such and such. Or this here, is. This celebrity is going to be here, get in front of this logo. Or... Did we get this shot? And it's obviously not in a row, you're just going to walk on. But the onus is back on the client. And so when the job is done in a night, you've already taken care of that shot list. You don't have to worry about it because they've already reported back that everything on the shot list was taken care of. We've got pictures of that and that's very important. Okay, so having that meeting before you start is so important so you know exactly what it is they want and you're going to give it back to them. If you're going to be successful at doing event photography, you're going to have to work harder than the photographer next to you. And Paul is a master at doing that. So it's going to be harder. You can't, it's not about your comfort, it's about getting the great shots. So how do you do that, Paul? Making yourself taking that flash off your camera. It's a little extra work for you to do that, but it's definitely worth it. It'll make you stand up. Why is it worth it? What does it give you? When you have it on camera, all of a sudden it's dead flat. It's very flat. It's pretty much the same. The Cobra does work pretty good on, and a lot of photographers out there make it work. What I love to do and to make it stand out, and it shows me working a little harder, is, and it's also a visual showing, is basically having that flash off camera. You, can, you don't need a bracket anymore. You can do your vertical shots, your horizontal shots. You can do detail shots. You can move it around. 
Just don't stand on the corner doing nothing. Always stay active. Shoot something and people when they're eating, that's usually when I'm downloading images for social media, sharing them with the client. So you're always on. They hire you for a few hours. They want to see you working always. Are you using a tripod when you're at a venue? Because that gives you the ability to drag the shutter and gives you a beautiful look at the lights inside the venue. One of the reasons I had Cobra is because I want to make things lighter. I want less equipment. I want things smaller. So I turned the light stand into a tripod. All of a sudden, you've got this stand that goes really low or it can go up extremely high. And it works it very effectively and I can drop my shutter. So all of a sudden, I get these nice epic shots of a room. If there's a waterfall in the background, there's, it's flowing. All of a sudden, it just turns this static picture of just standing there with this. And all of a sudden, you've got this epic picture you by using a tripod. And it's not really a tripod, it's a light stand. So I've seen you walk outside and take a picture outside before you start. Why do you do that? The, help tell the story. As soon as you walk, the very first thing when I get there is take that picture. It doesn't matter what time of day it is, but you, you're documenting how the event starts. And it's the so very first picture. where the event's at. Where it's at, where it's the building at, at. And sometimes it can be very attractive, sometimes it can. But you're helping to document what happened and how the event started. If you're going to get event work, you're going to need a portfolio. Today's portfolio is obviously a website and Instagram. But if you're going to have a website and Instagram and you need those, you're going to have to have images. So how do we get images if we don't have any images of events? So what are we going to do? We're going to do it for free? Doing it for free, if you don't have, if you want to get into a venue you've never done before, you're going to have to do it for free. But don't look at it like you're doing it for free. Look at it like this is like going to the gym. You're working out. You're getting to know your equipment. You're getting to know your settings and you still don't have all the pressure of shooting for the client because they're not paying you. One of the best things too is to find a local venue that is always, it's very close to you, or even if you have to travel to a venue that you've always wanted to shoot at, approach them. Find out from your local chamber of commerce, even a store opening, find out from them. You'll find an event person and they'll say, sure, you wanna be there and take pictures? It's rarely they're gonna say no. It's very important too to document your time so that's you can know yourself how long it takes, how long it takes not only shooting the pictures, but also in post-production. How long is it going to take you to turn around that job, which is also very important. So the event is all done. You've delivered the images. You're done. Walk away, that event. The best thing to do is send, when you send that link to the images, they get the images, but also send the invoice. It's a no charge an invoice, invoice okay. an, in, an actual invoice. Even though it's a no charge invoice, document how long it took you to do the images and along what time they were paying for it but also very important so they can see how much time you spent and also how much it costs. Even though they're not paying for you, it's also very important for you to document it so the next time around when they're going to hire you because you did a great job, they know how much it's going to cost they're them. They're going to see the price there. Okay, so we send our invoice, images are in, it's done. I think it's important that you now reach out to them in a month or when you see an event coming on their calendar. Hey are you needing anyone for this event that's about to happen? You start to key in on what's going on in your venue or the client's uh, world, and you start showing up whenever there's something that they may need you for. Definitely, you can even on your Instagram post a picture that'll tag them in, they'll see it, and they'll go, oh yeah, I remember that photographer. It's also very useful to do that. Always stay in touch with them, and they'll go, oh yeah, he did shoot it, but I, I know how much they're gonna charge me, so let's give them a call. So it's really important to be proactive at these events and network because just about everyone you meet is going in some ways possibly be a client. Working an event is a great portfolio for you. It's even better than a portfolio because they can actually see you as you're working. See you and in action. They'll see you in action, see how you interact with people, what's going on. All of a sudden, they'll ask you for a card. When you get hand out your card, all of a sudden, they will contact you, give them some pictures. They can share the pictures on social media. And all of a sudden, when they see it, all our potential clients that will have hired them before go, oh, these pictures are great. That's how you get rehired. You will make money. So if they ask you, send me some pictures. People always ask me, send me some pictures, send me some pictures. You know, you got a camera. It's like, they think automatically it means you send pictures to people. Well, it is, when I send pictures, I always have a watermark on it. So a lot of people don't like watermarks on the pictures, but putting one in the bottom right-hand corner, establish it. And I've seen a lot of times too when it can get cut off, that kind of sucks, but at the same time too, ask them to tag you, in the, especially on social media, but always put a watermark on the bottom right hand corner, not too big, but enough so it IDs you. And so it you does do work. send them, you'll send pictures to people. I will send pictures all the time. That's your portfolio. That's your, you know, advertise. Even for, you know, weddings and stuff like that, I always will have a watermark on it. So if, if the wedding client shares it, they will see who it is. So one of the most important things when shooting events is to make your client look good. Yes, it's obvious, but it's very important. 
I mean, if you don't put pictures up where people don't look good in the images, you want everyone to look sharp. You want them to look like they're having a great time. It's a really positive experience. So make sure everybody looks good, all the images that you're gonna post. If an image is funny, but it makes people look bad, it's not a good idea. There, yeah, you, you've gotta make people look good. That's the most important thing is when they, when they look bad, it's not worth it. Even though it's a funny picture, it is definitely not worth it. Sometimes, I'll, even a client, I will actually go in there and redo a little retouching because I wanna make sure that they look good. They look really good, absolutely. Correct. Not only in pictures, but also how I represent as a person, as a photographer out there. My job is to make this event go smooth. I'm there to solve your problems. I'm there to document it, but I'm also there to make you look good. With social media at these events, it's so easy for you to start posting things that you probably shouldn't be. It's important to get the client's permission or at least wait until they post before you start posting stuff on your social media. Definitely, a good rule of thumb is wait for they post it, especially if it's very somebody very important, because in the past I have posted something too soon, and all of a sudden they go, we didn't want that image out there, even though you shared it. So you just best rule of thumb, let them post the image before you share it. So is it important, the tags you put on your social media uh, posts? Definitely, because that's your link to the outside world. That's how people will find you. That's your advertising, that's your marketing. And if you don't tag and engage people, then guess what? You're not engaging in social media and it's called social media for the engagement. So you got to reach out. So it's very important. So you want to tag the celebrities and the venue and the, I mean, just anyone who's going to have any kind of input in that venue. You want to get them all on there, right? That's marketing, free marketing right there for you. It could be on Facebook. It could be on Instagram, but it's absolutely fantastic marketing by those using those tags. It's the same for event photographers as it is for wedding photographers. If you tag an event at a place, a location, then if someone's going to do an event at that location or if a bride and groom are going to get married at that location, they're going to see your pictures come up when they type it in because they will type it in and see what's out there and go, hey, love this photographer. Let's hire him. Correct. So it's the way you reach out and connect with people on, through the venue and the tags you put in. Definitely. I've got jobs from people reaching out in social media going, hey, you shot this event. And, you, and it, but again, in the past, if you're looking up a new event, look it up on social media. It's a great way to find out where the best pictures were taken. Very important to tag. And now you're a professional, and one of the most important things is to get insured. You need to be insured, you need to have your gear insured, because if you lose it, you need to replace it really quickly. Because if you're booked for an event the following weekend, you better be insured so you can have the gear guaranteed that you'll get it in place. The other reason, sometimes you won't even get into venues if you don't have liability insurance. So it's very important to get insurance. So there's a quick look at how you can make money doing event photography. Everything from how to get venues, working for free, creating that portfolio, and then getting out there and shooting and tagging and being able to make yourself get to the next job by working hard, standing out from the crowd, and doing some great imagery. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.